What's up everybody? This is Professor Tone. Welcome back to Music Production 101. Today's lesson we're going to learn about effects, which could fall under two categories in music production. Mixing and mastering. Mixing is like cooking. You have um, your set of ingredients, which are like your different sounds, and you basically want to make the right mix of ingredients, meaning, you know, a certain amount of this blending with a certain amount of that. So all of the parts go, to, go together in a balanced uh, presentation. Um, of course, the way you do it is going to be different based on each, each person's different um, different tastes or you know, different desires as far as what they want as an outcome. But knowing how to use the tools to create the effective mix is very important. I say it's like cooking because, um, you know, you could have a sauce with your tomatoes and your garlic and your onions. And, you know, you could add a little salt and you could taste it and say, you know what? It needs a little bit of pepper or it needs a little bit of this or that right um fortunately with beat making you can add something and then you can take it away with cooking once you put it in it's in there and you can't take it out but mixing is very much like cooking in in that you want to get the right combination and the right balance of textures and flavors or sounds um mastering is when you have you know your beat or your song all put together and all the parts are there and then adding effects to it to make it brighter or bigger or have more bass or um, you know have different effects like echo or reverb and so today what I'm gonna do is teach you a couple things how to get a nice mix and show you a couple effects so I already loaded up a beat that I made. Let's give it a listen real quick. That's my beat to start with, pre-made. Now what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna mess with the volumes of a couple of of the the different layers here, and that's the most basic means of mixing is the volume of each layer. How does the sample or the instruments go with or against the drums? Because you don't want one to overpower the other. Unless that's what you're going for. Everyone goes for something different. But I always like mine to be just right. So it sounds like they were made together. These are separate. So I'm going to show you what they sound like separate. So A is my sample. That's what I did for the sample, and this is the the um, pattern loop. See my MIDI notes. And here's my drum pattern.
So what I always do is whichever one I choose first, uh, it could be the drums or it could be the instruments. Um, I try to get that to the right level and then I make the other one match that and then I sort of go back and forth <coughs> to work them uh, so they're working in sync. <coughs> Excuse me. So for this, I started with the instruments. So what I do and what one, what one of my professors at Northeastern taught me was don't use don't use your eyes to predict uh, don't use your eyes to gauge the volume because you might say okay this volume is at level 10 and this one's at level 7 but I need both of them to be at level 10 that doesn't matter because the drum sounds might be louder than the instrument sounds so the instrument could be at level 10 and the drums could be at level 5 but they're actually sounding the same coming out of the speaker so the biggest gem I could drop on you as far as mixing with volumes is listen with your ears not your eyes it sounds really obvious but that's what it comes down to so that being the uh, that being the the standard I'll start with these I'll take these drums and I'll turn the volume all the way down and then I'll slowly turn it up without even looking at what the volume is to see where it feels comfortable where it feels right so I'm gonna turn this up slowly and not look to feel natural. Now see, that's too much. So go back down. a band was playing the guitar and the drums and they're all leveled out so when you have multiple multiple layers what you want to do is figure out your primary instrument set it to a level your secondary one bring it up <clears throat> bring it up to match that and then fill in all your other instruments that you know if you want something in the background you're gonna bring it up just really lightly and make it sound further away so you're going to turn it up just a little bit now um, I'm going to keep it basic and just keep the two layers for, for the sake of learning uh, in an effective time manner here so um, that's the essential um, principles of mixing your volumes okay in order of priority now let's talk about some effects I'm not gonna hit you with too many effects I'm gonna show you two for now the most important effect in mixing is the equalizer What the equalizer does is it pinpoints a certain frequency meaning you know either the bass which is really low or the mid or the high which is the treble and adjusting them so you could take a sound that's pre-existing and make it sound brighter or deeper or you can cut frequencies out so um you can an equalizer lets you remold a sound to how you want it to sound so um i'm going to show you what an equalizer does to this instrument layer so i'm going to go to the group and add the equalizer now I have my low, 
my low mid, my high mid, and my high. So listen to what this does. Now you can hear the real high end getting real sharp and crispy. So I'm turning up, I'm turning up the gain, which means it's taking that high end frequency and turning up the volume of it. Right here. So now the gain is up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the frequency either lower or higher and it's already turned up. So this is finding where the frequency is being turned up. Or I can turn it down. So now it's gonna cut the high end out. When it's all the way up here, this is a high frequency and this is your lowest frequency. So now it's cutting out the high. make that normal so now in comparison to that let's listen to what happens when I move the bass frequency let's turn it up first <laughs> not a lot of bass in this instrument so you can't really hear it doing too much but let's turn it down now it's cutting out the bass now it sounds like it's coming out of a little clock radio because there's no bass it's really thin and all high end let's bring it back to normal this is what this is a mid frequency So now it's pinpointing that guitar and that piano. So let's take that off. Let's listen to what an EQ does to the drums. Makes it real sharp up here. Or the bass, right? Let's go to the, so this is gonna touch the kick. Now it's real punchy. Okay, so that's how that's how an equalizer works. Um, I'm gonna get into another example of how the equalizer works in the next lesson. I'm gonna open up Pro Tools, which is a recording and mixing and mastering program. It's industry standard. And I'm going to show you more about that, but for now, I want you guys to try to listen to how it sounds first, before we focus on the visuals. Like I said, listening with your ears, not your eyes. <clears throat> so, um, let's talk about an effect that's really useful. So that was the equalizer. EQ stands for equalizer. So now let's throw on some reverb. What reverb is is the sound reverberations inside of what would be a um, synthesized room. So, for example, if you're ever in a long hallway and you sing or yell something or make a sound, you hear it go down the hallway. Or if you're in, you know, like a big church or like a really big room, you can hear your voice sort of go, Oh and sort of stretches out and um, if you're in a small room you can hear oh and there's no echo and there's no sound reverberating off of the walls so what happens is if you're in a big room your voice goes out and then it bounces from wall to wall to wall to wall to wall really fast and it makes it sound like it's stretching out this is different from actual echo as far as effects go because what an echo is, um, well, reverb is an is a kind of echo, but it's quicker. So it's like -do 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 -do. a effect called delay is more of a classic echo, 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 echo. 
because there's a time, and it's called delay because there's a time delay between when it happens. So a delay would be like echo, 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 or echo, 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 where reverb is echo. So it's, it's a different kind of echo. There's reverb, which is the room, and delay, which is the timing. Those are separate effects, both based on the same principle. So what we're going to do is we're going to mess with the reverb first on the drums. Actually, the, this reverb is on the master, so it's going to touch the drums and the sample. So let's listen to how it touches the drums first. Right now it's off. And then I'm going to put it on. So you can hear how it sounds like it's in a big room. And I can turn up the mix too, so it's more of the room sound mixed in. So that's a high mix. And I have, this is the room size. So I, right now the room size is big. I can turn it down so it's smaller room. Now it sounds like it's in a bathroom or something. That sounds like it's in a basement. And then this is like a hallway. And this would be like a big, you know, like arena or a church. I usually like to make the size big and then turn the mix down. So it just shows a little bit of the reverb. Now let's turn this off and let's hear what a delay does. Let's pull out a delay. Um, beat delay. control there for a second. So the delay. So right now I have my delay on and you can do it by time signature. Right now it's 316. So this is a quicker time delay. Da 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 da. And then this is a little bit more spread out. And even more spread out. And it's doing it by time signature based on the tempo. So this is a, um, this is two sixteenths. This is three sixteenths. And this is four sixteenths. So also we can turn up turn up the amount of feedback so we'll go longer. One, two, three. So that's delay, like when you're on top of a mountain and you go echo, 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 echo and it bounces off each peak. That's what this is simulating. So that's delay. So I'm not going to use that in this, so let's turn that off. We can actually um, get rid of that. <clears throat> so now let's listen to how it's going to, the reverb, I'm just going to bring this reverb back and listen to what it sounds like with the instrument. Let's turn the drums off. <laughs> Now you have to have a keen ear to be able to pick up the difference here. This is on and off. <clears throat> so the reverb's not adding a whole lot of space to that guitar sound, but it's adding a little bit. And, um, you know, technically 
it's more of a dry, it's more dry. So when you have the reverb all the way up, all the way up, this is called wet because it's all reverb sound. When it's off, it's called dry. So there's nothing in it. Wet, mixed, dry. So I'm gonna keep it where it was. You can hear it more with the drums. equalizer on the master. The master means all of the, it's gonna affect all of the layers. So let's play this. Makes the high end, that high band makes it sharper. We don't want to be too loud, don't want it to cut and hurt. And uh, if it makes your ears feel funny, that means it's too loud. You turn up the bass. spot is of the instrument you're trying to turn up based on the frequency. Now I can turn off the bass. Now it sounds like what it would sound like if it was coming out of somebody's headphones, you know, on the train when you can hear their, the music is too loud because there's no bass. Those are a couple effects to start with. Equalizer, based on the frequencies, pinpointing frequencies, and molding the sound to how you want it to be. And delay, delay, delay. And reverb. So there's the first lesson in mixing and mastering. Mixing and mastering is the most complicated part of music production because there's so much fine tuning, so many infinite different ways you could make something sound. And so um, we're gonna come back to it next time and open up Pro Tools, which is even more complicated. We're gonna take, um, take a beat and really dive into using plugins and different effects to change and manipulate a sound. Until next time, <laughs>